Hi, in this video today we're going to be cleaning out the inside of this Dyson Cool Tower fan. And while we're in here, we're going to be cleaning out two of the hidden filters as well. Only do this if your fan is playing up. If your fan is working fine, don't do this because it's not designed to be taken apart. But if your fan isn't working properly, maybe you've got an F2 error, then increasing the airflow could fix it. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video, but I stress only do this if you're already having problems with your fan because it's quite fiddly on the inside and you could end up breaking something and making it worse. So do this as a last resort. Normally you can clean these from the outside and it will work just fine, but if you've had heavy use you might need to clean the inside of it or your fan blades themselves might be clogged up with dust or dirt and you need to get to the actual fan to clean it out. In this video I'm going to show you that. Let's get started first things first we're going to take off this top bit here we are unplugged so make sure you're unplugged from the mains to take off this hold the bottom and just twist the top a tiny little bit counterclockwise and then that will lift off now we have a little screw just here this one is a torx 9 so a t9 and now we need to get a pry tool and we need to pry in just here, here, and also here. There's basically three clips that you need to loosen. So get your tool in here and just uh, lift the black bit up while prying in here. And hopefully you'll find bit by bit they will lift up. There we go. So they're out there now. You can see a clip here, here, and here. And now it allows us to take this completely out from here. And this is your uh, this is your motor here. Now one of the filters is simply just at the bottom here. So if you look deep in here, you see that there's a filter here. So we can take that out. Yeah. These are both lovely and clean now on this uh, fan because I've already cleaned them. But you will find that that will have some dust on. So you can give that a vacuum and then you can put it in some warm water and give it a nice good clean out. Be gentle with it, it's only foam. Make sure it's fully dry before you put them back into your fan. Don't put them into your fan when they're wet. Make sure they're fully dry. You can get the hair dryer on them or leave them outside in the sun to dry. So that's that one, nice and easy to get to. The other one is located in here. Now it's really important that you clean in deep down inside here. So. You can see where all the vents come through here. This is where it sucks in the air from the room. So basically you need to make sure that all of these are really nice and clean because you will get a dust build up on the outside and the inside. So if they're all blocked up, you're not gonna have good airflow into your fan. So get a cloth and clean, just a very, not wet, just very slightly damp and clean all in here. Remember there's a circuit board underneath here at the bottom, do not get water down there. So just a slightly almost dry but slightly damp cloth all the way around here and clean up all these holes. This has already been cleaned. So we're going to put this on its side so we don't damage anything and we need to undo one, two, three, four screws from the top here. These are also T9. And these are long screws. And we're going to lift that off there. Put that to one side. You can also clean around in here as well. You will have a dust build up in here. Now we have four screws here, here, here and here. And these are a Torx 15, T15. And now we can lift this off, like so. And this is the other filter in here. Now you should find that this one is very gray. On my one, it was really, really dirty. In fact, you can still see remnants of dust around the edge here on all these edge bits. So it gives you a good opportunity to clean all in here. So you can take out this filter, like so, and you can give that a nice good clean again. Make sure that it's fully dry before you put it back in. So I'm not gonna wash these because they're already clean. So that is it, that's the filter here and the filter here as well. So these are the hidden filters. Right, so we need to put it back together now, which is a reverse of what we've just done. So on this one, we're gonna be putting it on. You can see that there's only a certain way it will go. You can see the cutouts will only marry up a certain way. So keep working it round until we have 
that there, that there, that there. And can you see we have the cutout for the wires here? So it will only actually go in one way round. So we're gonna place this back onto here. You can see the wires go out this way. If you've dislodged the wires, you're gonna to have to place them all back in its home. But if you're careful, they should stay where they are. And uh, we're gonna place this here over this bit. So you can see now it all lines up nicely here. And we're gonna put pop back in the four T15 screws. Right, so make sure they're all done up nice and tight. Now it's important that when you've done this that you make sure that it's still spinning freely here because if it's not, you're gonna have a problem. Next up, we need to put this one on and you can see that we have a little cutout just here. See, that looks different than the rest. That again is to go where the wires are so you can't get it in the wrong position. And we're gonna do up the four T9 long screws. Right, everything is still spinning nicely. So now we're gonna put the filter back in here. Be careful of these wires here. You can see that we have a cutout on the filter. This one, it doesn't matter which way around it goes, but the cutout is for the cables just down at the bottom here. So we're gonna put that in. And we're gonna tuck it all in, not just around the edge, but also the middle bit. So that's the edge done, but the middle bit needs to go under this black circular thing. So I'm just tucking it around there making sure it's all nice and flat. There you go. So you can see now it's seated nicely there. Now, if you have a look here, we have three little bits, just here, here, and here. These little pins here that's on the spring need to locate into each of those bits. Now, it's awkward because you have this big mass of wires going up here, but what I'm gonna do is, if you have a look to the left-hand side of these wires, this spring here is gonna go into the mounting point just to the right-hand side of the Dyson cool bit. So there's a mounting point just down here, which is just on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna put the left-hand one of these just down on there, and that should hopefully line it up. You might have to use a little light to get in here because it's hard to see exactly where it's sitting. But there we go, that now has located nicely there so it's got springs on so it's allowed to move a little bit and now we're going to line this up this is nice and easy you see the hole here for the screw you just put it to there and it should clip down into place and each of the little clips will go into their home and we just need to do up the t9 and that's it that's back together now we're now going to get the top we're going to line up this bit here where it says air multiplier technology with the dyson cool you can see it's gone down nicely and we're just going to turn a tiny little bit clockwise and that is it. So there we have it back together and it's on number 10 at the moment and you can see the oscillation still working. So just to show you the air getting sucked in through here, if we get a tissue and put it up there, you can see that that is where the air gets sucked in all the way around. So if you're in a dusty environment or even not a dusty environment, you will get a build up of dust in that area in there and because you get a build up in there you're going to find a bit of dust on the bottom filter and also that filter up by the motor as well but it gives you a chance to make sure that the blade is spinning nicely on the inside with your finger if it's grating or stuck that could well be why you're getting an f2 error code but by cleaning it out in there you're going to have nice good airflow and hopefully your dicing will keep working but like i said it's not a serviceable thing to do only do it if you're having problems with your Dyson. Don't take it apart if it's already working. If this video has helped you out, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching.